Good afternoon all. This is my web server. It's uh, actually a NAS, a network attached storage unit. It's a QNAP, I think it's a, a TS110 and it's just a little uh, Linux computer I suppose with a single disk drive. This one's got a one terabyte and the idea is that it hosts using Apache server and WordPress my website. Now also in this part of the uh, workshop I've got uh, a BT modem that's for fiber broadband. I went for the high uh, bandwidth one, the 76 megabytes maximum and up here I've got a Draytech router. I liked this one because it has six uh, ports here in addition to the modem port. So you might think with all this kit that my website is up, running, accessible and fast. But uh, no, it's not. And that's because the QNAP server one day said to me, would you like to upgrade from firmware version 3 point whatever it was to 4 point who knows? And I said rather foolishly, yes. And uh, ever since then, randomly, it goes into this mode where the disk light, uh, which one is it? Yeah, the HDD light just flashes madly, um, but it's not accessible either as a file server on my LAN or as a web server on the internet. And when I see the hard disk light uh, going crazy, I just have to shut the thing down and reboot it. And it just keeps doing it. It's a real nuisance. So for the last few months, my web server has been uh, a bit flaky. For the last few days or possibly weeks, it's actually been offline completely because by turning off the web server functionality, the thing works quite reliable as a file server, so that's how I've uh, been using it. Not ideal, of course, to have no website. Now the other thing that's not ideal is that this has a single disk. So if that disk fails, I lose all my data, and that's one terabyte. So I really wanted um, a solution to the web server problems, and I wanted a dual disk server so that I'd have uh, some sort of protection against failure. And so here's my uh, solution, just arrived from Amazon. It's a new QNAP Turbo NAS. This one's a TS231. It's dual disk, uh, hot swap, and it's going to be used in RAID 1. And I've also bought two two terabyte Western Digital red disks. The red disks are suitable for, uh, or tailored for use in NAS units. So here's one of the uh, Western Digital uh, red drives. It's two terabytes. As I say, I've got two of these drives. Now these are specifically for NAS. Um, I'm not quite sure why. They're a bit more expensive, uh, about 10 pounds more than the desktop, desktop drives. I did look at the desktop drives, uh, the green ones, and also looked at the purple ones, which are also a bit cheaper. They're intended for surveillance systems, um, DVRs for camera systems. But um, I just wasn't convinced that uh, either of those QNAP's compatibility list, in other words, not specifically compatible with this NAS box, the purple ones said they had firmware which, firmware which was geared more towards data availability than data integrity. So in the end, I plumped for the, uh, the reds. So what I need to do next is put these two two terabyte disks into the NAS box. Uh, now, because they're going to be in RAID 1, which is mirror RAID, uh, the total capacity will be 2 terabytes. You'll lose the capacity. In RAID systems, you always lose the capacity of one drive. And of course, in RAID 1, where you've only got two disks, that's half your data lost. But you do get um, the data integrity. If one of the drives fails, not only do you not lose any data, but the box actually continues to work. It will work off the other drive. You then replace the faulty drive whenever you want, or well, as quickly as you can, I suppose, because then you're actually running on one drive, so you're no better off than the single drive unit. Replace the faulty drive, and the system will just rebuild, and you're back to uh, data integrity again. And then once I've got the uh, basic uh, file server functionality up and running, I'll then switch on the Apache web server, uh, MySQL database server, and also WordPress to get my website up and running and that'll be on my domain 256.uk. 
So I thought it might be a bit of fun to take a look at uh, this QNAP uh, server housing. Um, now I'm covering up things like MAC addresses. I'm not sure whether this is entirely necessary, but uh, I just don't know what the significance of these numbers are. Uh, so if you see stickers covering things up, it's only MAC addresses or cloud numbers or something of that type. So there's a little thing on the box here which gives you an idea of what this thing does. It's a media server for sort of movies and music. I'm not too interested in that. File server, that's very useful. I put all my YouTube video backups on my file server. Uh, an FTP server, backup server, download station, surveillance station, that's useful. It um, stores all the footage coming from network cameras. And of course there is web server, which is one of the things I want it for. Now it says down here that it's a 1.2 gig dual core. I think it's an ARM CPU in this one. Uh, SATA 6 gigabit bits probably per second, uh, dual gigabit ethernet ports which can be used for uh, either separately for different IP addresses or they can be trunked so you can get du uh, double the bandwidth. Uh, what's this? Three USB 3s and an eSATA port. Uh, so inside the box we've got the unit itself, a box of uh, bits, accessories and a mains power lead. I think in this accessories box we've got a quick start guide and also power supply and a network cable, ethernet cable. So here's the unit uh, still in its polythene bag. I'll just take that off. So here's the box on my desk. Now the uh, quick start guide is really incredibly simple. You fit the two disk drives and then you uh, go to start.qnap.com and enter the cloud key and that's it that's all they give you my cloud keys under there i'll say i've covered it up i'm not sure what the significance of it is it may be nothing but i've done that anyway um there's a couple of mac addresses under here so we've got two gigabit ethernet lan ports uh two usb 3s eSATA, dc 12 volts uh, to run it and then on the front there's another usb 3 and then there's the on off switch and the USB uh, copy. So if you plug a USB stick into there and just press the button, it just transfers all the contents onto the hard disks. Uh, so it seems that I have to take these two drive carrier modules out. So let's do that. Disk two, I believe, and disk one. And now I should be able to get the cover off this thing. Now, I'm not sure if I was meant to open this up. Probably not, actually, because the drives, of course, slide in from the front. All the screws are marked with red paint, which implies that they're not to be touched um, because there are issues of alignment. If we look down in here, you can see at the bottom there the two SATA connectors for the uh, two disk drives. Uh, there's a fan in there. And if you look at the board there, you can make out... Uh, battery in the near part here. MAC addresses are written on the board there. There's uh, the heatsink down there for the CPU, the 1.2 gig ARM CPU. And quite honestly, there's not a lot else to see. Um, the connectivity stuff is at the back here, power, SATA, USB and LAN ports. And that's about it. So I'll refit these screws because uh, I don't really need to take the housing off because uh, unlike my single drive unit, this one has the hot swap uh, drive aperture on the front here so I can uh, fit them directly into there. So let's fit the drives onto the carriers now. So it seems that for three and a half inch discs there are four screws. Uh, that's the diagram for two and a half inch discs for minus three and a half. And then this bag has the screws supplied for both drive types. Right, let's open one of these Western Digital red drives. I've just grounded myself on something earthed so that I don't uh, zap anything with static and uh, stick it into the tray, presumably, like that. Right, those are the two drives fitted into their drive caddies. Now there's nothing in the manual about linking these drives in any way. I don't think you have to set uh, one of them to drive zero or one or anything like that. I assume the electronics in the cabinet does all that. So now let's put them into the cabinet. 
So just fit the uh, second of the two drives in to the unit and that's both of them in. So they're in the uh, unit. Um, the next thing I, I assume is to switch it on. Well that's about as far as I'm going to go today because I've promised my mate that I'd uh, let him sit in on the setup um, for this unit. But this is where it's going to go in the data corner of uh, my workshop next to the broadband connection. Um, what I need to do next is uh, get all the data off this server transferred onto here just as a file server, format the original QNAP and load the uh, firmware on from scratch. And then what I think I'll do is just use this one as a surveillance server because uh, if a disk fails on a, a videotape machine it's not necessarily a catastrophe. You can just get it all up and running again doesn't matter if you lose footage of nothing happening. Um, and then this will be the uh, main file server because it's got this data protection by the RAID 1 configuration of two drives. And this will also be the uh, the new web server, which will be on 256.uk, but it's not there at the moment. Uh, one of the things I'm hoping to do on my new website is have backup materials for uh, various projects uh, in the videos that I'm doing. So uh, PDF documents of circuit diagrams, software, Arduino software, um, any other support materials which I can put on here in PDF format or other document format, uh, images and so on and so forth. So that's a little look at uh, the data corner of my workshop. Um, hopefully soon I'll have a fully functioning website uh, courtesy of the new server and also uh, much better data protection because of RAID. So if a drive does fail um, I'm protected against losing all my data. Cheerio!